Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, The Millennial Investor, and today we are going over the another big change that I just made in my portfolio. In the M1 Finance Dividend Growth Portfolio, it seems like I just made a change the other day, but the changes in this market with the stock market falling just through the floor, as you can see from this chart over the last year, you can tell that now is the time to be making changes to your portfolio now that you can take advantage of this market downturn. Now we did make a change in the portfolio. We changed three companies and I want to be highlighting the first one in today's video which we took down 2% in the target weighting from 5% down to 3 which is ticker symbol KMB or Kimberly Clark Corporation. Now this is a great company it's not one that I hate I'm not recommending selling out of it or even rebalancing but just lowering the target weight to move some of the money out to focus money into older holdings. Now in the following two videos I'll talk about the two companies that I just increased in the portfolio, but for now I think Kimberly Clark is the one that I want to be taking down. And we're going to talk about in this video why that is. This company has a long track record, uh, let me rephrase that, this company has a very, very long track record of about 150 years, a century and a half this company has been in business. And this company is one that people use every single day and we all know and take for granted, but I want to talk about why I think that this company's opportunity moving forward is not as good as these other two. Because when you look at their revenue growth it is very lackluster and not one that a lot of people can froth at if you take a look at their revenue over the last 10 years well shockingly enough it's actually negative their 10-year revenue growth is actually negative 0.7 as you can see from my highlighting on my mouse down here so we're going to talk about why that is what this will look like moving forward and what i think that this is a good opportunity to be doing as an investor if you haven't seen me before my name is jordan i'm a millennial investor and i highlight my portfolio by showcasing my growth portfolio holdings which is currently salesforce amazon crocs and tesla puts and my dividend growth portfolio which is what we're going to be highlighting in this video now if you want to take a look at any of these holdings for yourself or if you want to get referral opportunities that is all down below in the description which includes of course the portfolio that I'm showcasing in this video which is M1 Finance which 125 people have signed up for so far. So check that out down below if you're interested you'd help support me you'd help support the channel and hopefully you could get yourself into a brokerage that is great for a dividend growth investor like this portfolio is meant to be built around. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and without further ado let's go ahead and get started with Kimberly Clark. Now if you don't know what this company is I'll go ahead and showcase it for you because if you don't know the name Kimberly Clark you probably know at least some of these brands. Now these are some of their top brands that they're highlighting here on their main investor relations page. Headquartered in Dallas, Texas they own a plethora of brands including Viva, Scott, Pull Ups, Cottonelle, Kleenex, Huggies, Kotex, and many others. This company is one that many people know. And in fact, about a fourth of the world population, according to their research, uses one of their products every single day. And they produce almost $20 billion in revenue as of the last year. Like I said, they've been in business for a century and a half, 150 years, and they're sold across 175 different countries. Now, this company has been growing, but it's been slow growth. They're really only growing alongside inflation. Because going all the way back to, say, 20 20 years ago, in 2001, they were at 14.5 billion, and two decades later, they only grew it to 19. And like I said, over a 10-year period, they have not only not grown, but they've actually slightly shrunk in terms of their revenue. Now, the profitability. The profitability has actually went down as well. If you look at 2021 numbers versus 2011 numbers, it's basically flat. Same thing for free cash flow. The moral of the story is this company does stay very defensive, and it does continue to do the same business that it does over time, but really the only thing you're getting as a shareholder is two things. Returned capital of investment through shares outstanding being bought back and dividends. This company has a long track record of providing return capital to shareholders. Going back from 1985 to today, it was $0.07 cents in 1985 versus today's quarterly payment of $1.16. So meanwhile, when we looked at that revenue growth from 2011 to 2021, the revenue growth was actually negative. Meanwhile, the dividend during that time from 2011 has went from $1.67, has went from $0.67 cents all the way up to $1.16. So this company has grown its dividend quite nicely. Now the same thing can be said in terms of its shares outstanding. The shares outstanding has went in 2011 from a previous 398 million to today's 340 million. So what is that? Just rough estimate in my head. I think that's around 15% or so of the company that they bought back just in the last 10 years. So not bad. 
What we care about as investors is not what this company did in the past, but what it's going to do in the future. And in fact, according to them, net sales are going to increase 2 to 4%. So they're forecasting a mid-range of about 3% revenue growth, which for me just does not cut it. And the main reason why you would own a company like this is because the company is extremely defensive. The stock price does not move much. It basically stays flat over a five-year period. It's up 2%. It doesn't move much at all. Now, this gives you an opportunity to invest in other holdings. Normally in times like this, if you look year to date, the company's down 14%. Now this is much better than many other indexes like the SPY, the S&P 500, which year to date is down over 20% so far. We're in a market that is currently being classified as a bear market. Now this gives you opportunity to invest in other holdings. And so I'm gonna showcase in the next video and the one after that, what holdings I'm reinvesting into because the one thing that this company has going for it with its capital being reinvested constantly back into itself is a great dividend yield. With that dividend going up over time and the share price going basically nowhere if you take the current quarterly dividend payment of 1.16 multiply that times four and you'll see that they pay out four dollars and 64 cents for every share that you own on an annual basis take 4.64 divide by 120.71 today's current share price and you'll see that as of today the company's current dividend yield is paying out 3.84 percent so just to buy and hold this company and to do nothing else all you have to do is sit and wait and you'll collect almost 4% a year. Now that said, we're going to talk in the next video about a company that I think can have a better dividend yield and more room for opportunity of growth. Because while this is a company I like, it's very defensive, it's an easy money stock as an investor in my opinion, not financial advice, do your own research. But while this may be an easy money stock, it's also one that doesn't have a lot of upside. This is not one that's going to double in a year, or probably even double in the next 5 or 10 years to be honest. But it's one that's going to be a slow grower and is going to stay pretty much flat and just return capital to shareholders. But other than that guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you watching all the way in. Check out all the stuff down below in the description if you haven't already. But without further ado, my name is Jordan, I'm a millennial investor, and I'll catch you guys next time.